Elizabeth Warren is mm. out there. She's out there again. And I believe Bernie had something to do with this as well. But they're talking wealth taxes. Wealth taxes are coming. Maybe. I don't know. An idea so bad that even the socialist nations around the world have gotten rid of it because it's a terrible idea. And everyone realized that. Okay, there's, there's very few countries in Europe that still have a wealth tax because it's blatantly obvious what happens you when think, you have a wealth tax. You think Chief Warren uh, would implement it on herself or would she be exempt? Well, actually, I think she will be exempt because this is for ultra millionaires. Oh. Yeah, for ultra millionaires, not for mm -hmm. the normal millionaires who are still part of the 1%. But obviously, when you're part of the 1%, you need to focus the blame on the 0.1%. Those are the actual this bad people. Even, this isn't even for the mega millionaires. No, this no. This is just the ultra. Ultra. People who won the ultra millionaire jackpot, and that's how they got their money. <laughs> that's, yeah. Because they won the ultra millionaire not jackpot. The, not the mega millions. Yeah. So this comes from inequality.org, which oh. I will warn you, don't read it if you have blood pressure problems or a history of stroke or heart attack in your family whatsoever. Don't go to inequality.org. Just don't do it. I'll do it for you. Not while you're pregnant or you may become pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> you must be this tall. You must be this tall to read inequality.org. <laughs> Today, War Warden Elizabeth Warren introduced her updated wealth tax proposal, the Ultra Millionaire Tax Act. Mm. According to an analysis by the Institute for Policy Studies from inequality.org and Americans for Tax Fairness, America's billionaires alone would have paid about $114 billion in wealth taxes in 2020 if the wealth tax had been in effect. The top 15 billionaires would have paid $40 billion in 2020 had the tax been in place. See the Americans for Tax Fairness special resource page. If you want to go to the website and look at that page, do it. If you feel like punishing yourself for some wrongdoing, uh, some terrible things you've committed in the past, then go to inequality.org and read that. We'll put a link in the show notes. Over the next 10 years, U.S. billionaires would pay an estimated $1.4 We have to get that 10-year figure in there. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because then it's something that would actually matter. Because, you know, this number, it doesn't... It, there's this crazy idea that if you tax billionaires, that then we'll have money to do stuff. For 10 years. Yeah. If you the just billionaires tax, will stick around for 10 years. They talk about this idea like they would have paid $114 billion in 2020. What would $114 have gotten you in 2020? It would have funded the federal government for five days. 114 billion. 114 billion. Five days. Mm -hmm. 114 billion dollars. Maybe six. I don't know. It depends on how their budget process works out. Maybe six days. So the idea that we're going to pass this Monday wealth through tax. Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to pass this wealth tax and then everything's going to be okay. And then we're going to have enough. Then we'll have the things that we need. It's completely insane. It the, couldn't be a spending problem, Nate. No, it's no, just, no. They don't have enough income. money. No, it's there's an income problem. It's the productive side of the economy has too much money to continue being more and more productive. And that's obviously the issue in an economy is when the productive people become more and more productive. You have to stop this, this terrible, dastardly deed of continued increase in production. You got to stop it. You have to stop. So also, by the way, that 10-year figure from the billionaires, $1.4 trillion, that wouldn't even pay for the COVID relief bill that we're waiting on the Senate to vote on. Yeah, the, the next the one. One bill. Yeah. One bill. The $1.9 trillion bill. The 10-year figure from the billionaires from Warden, Warden's, Warden? Mm -hmm. Warren's wealth tax would not even pay for the next COVID relief bill that we're about to do. That we would spend in not even a year. But it would disincentivize a lot of investment. It would hurt production, something that you actually don't need to do in an economy. Like if you have an economy where people need jobs and where businesses mm -hmm. need to flourish, all these you, types and, of things. And, you know, the people who, who are fine with debt say, oh, well, if you look at, you know, percentage to GDP, <laughs> so what happens if the GDP goes down? That would never way? happen. Well, no. if you start taking the productive <laughs> money out of the economy, that's what happens to your GDP. It plummets because it's no oh, longer... Man. You're no longer producing uh, the same goods that you would have been producing. So that GDP starts to go down. Under the legislation, the wealth tax would be only levied on people with wealth over $50 million, which is roughly 100,000 taxpayers. The annual tax rate would be just two cents on the dollar. Guys, it's only two cents on the dollar. That's all it is. Okay. I don't, I I don't know why people are upset about this. 
Her net worth is oh twelve million, so she's fine. Now yeah, she'll be fine. She's it's a, just yeah. above what her she can make net wealth is. She could triple her money and still be fine. So it's going to be a two two cents on the dollar, also known as two percent, for people with wealth between fifty million and one billion, and just three cents on the dollar, which is also known as three percent, for wealth above one billion. There are only about six hundred and fifty billionaires in the country that would pay the three percent rate. Well, there's only 650 people. Mm. There's there's 350 million people in the country, Charlie. This is only going to affect 650 of them. This is what they said about the income tax, by the way, in 1913. It was only supposed to be a small percentage tax mm-hmm. on the rich. Just one cent on the dollar That's also. It. That's all it was going to be. That's all it was going to be. <laughs> the, you see where, that, you see where that went. The combined wealth of the U.S. billionaires now exceeds $4.2 trillion. In the 11 months since the start of the pandemic lockdowns, total U.S. billionaire wealth has increased 1.3 trillion. <laughs> uh, and by the way, this coming from fee.org, only 2% of the billionaire's wealth is actually in cash and physical assets, things like that. The rest of it's all in investments and business ownership. 98% of it in investments and business ownership, only 2% of it in cash. So we'll talk and about... What we're not talking... Well, we're not, we won't get into this today. We need to see about getting Peter Schiff on the show, but... Think, you also have to think about how much money was injected into the market. So, so yeah, the the amount of cash they have has gone up, but what's the purchasing power of that cash now? You know, that the value of the dollars, what's the rate of inflation? Well, they say it's about 2%. We all know it's a lot higher than that. But you have to think about once this money starts to make its way throughout the economy and this next COVID relief bill and all the, I think the Fed has $8 trillion on its balance sheets now, so yeah, the the billionaires are going to have you know more billions, but then uh, the the with, with inflation and and the devaluing of the dollars, the purchasing power is going to be less and less. And that's actually what the market is worried about right now. That's why it had such a shaky week last week. That's why people are saying that we're coming in for a thirty five forty percent downturn here again. Some and people a lot are of saying it, seventy to ninety. A lot of people are saying more than that. Um, over these same eleven months, seventy three million Americans, seventy three million Americans lost their jobs. 25 million caught the coronavirus and half a million died from it. Billionaire wealth is up 18-fold over the past 30 years, from $240 billion in 1990 to $4.2 trillion today, according to Forbes data. And then they talk about this number that they use. Remember, we have harped on this over and over again. Since the pandemic began, they've gained this much money. And so they talk about that date. They pull from March 18th. Say March 18th is used as the unofficial beginning of the pandemic because by then most federal and state economic restrictions responding to the virus were in place. So that's what they mark as the unofficial beginning of the pandemic. But what they're not paying attention to is what the market did before that. The market had already adjusted for the pandemic beginning and had already dropped by 40% at that time. By that like 35. 35% maybe at that time. So how much did they lose? Yeah. On the way down to March 13th, so besides the, Bill Ackman. It's, it's insane. They lost 35%, we'll say, before the date that they started pulling from, which is just some, it's some tomfoolery is what they call that. It's a lot of cherry picking in their data sets, which drives me insane. The idea that they would start from the, the gain from the very bottom of the stock market just shows you that all the they're last trying, bull run. They're just trying to manipulate the statistics. Of course. Because if you were going to actually look at it, you would look at 2020 as a whole. You wouldn't pull from the time that the market was at its bottom during the year and then start counting from that date because all those people lost money all the way down to that date. It's crazy, man. It's, it's crazy. But most people won't understand that. It's that's like, why, you got that's why you're listening to the show. You got $100. I took $80 from you, and then I gave you $100. And you're like, I just had a five times increase of my money. (laughs) No, you didn't. You had 100. You went down to 20, so you lost 80%. And then I just gave you $100. And you're like, yeah, my my income, my wealth just went up by fivefold. No, it didn't. No. It absolutely did not do that. (laughs) Okay. Did not do that at all. It didn't do that at all, man. Okay, so that that just that kind of stuff drives me nuts. And you basically went from hundred to one twenty. Yeah, so twenty percent increase, but not a four hundred percent increase yeah, from That's, February. Yeah, if you count from February, it's it's a lot less of an increase than it is from March eighteenth. And they 
They harp on this here. They, March 18th is used. It's the unofficial beginning. Uh, Forbes picked it to mm-hmm. measure billionaire wealth for the 2020 edition. See, they know that. Why don't we fishing. just go over all of 2020? If we're going to count 2020, why are we starting March 18th, 2020? It wouldn't make the point that they're wanting wouldn't to make. January 1st, 2020 be a good starting date? No, you want to pull from the bottom. <laughs> okay. Now we're here. That's what you want to do. Exactly. You want to start from the bottom. Yeah. Just like Drake. Okay? Just like just Drake did. He when you start on Disney is the bottom. All right. That's the very <laughs> bottom right there. Okay. <laughs> the other problem with this that I have is, okay, now we have all of this wealth. He wasn't a wheelchair on Disney. <laughs> that's, have... why, that's why. <laughs> now, <laughs> now we have. And now he's walking around on stage. Gosh, <laughs> man, that's a pretty good game, man. <laughs> pretty is. good. We have all this wealth and we've got Amazon and we've got Tesla and we've got Microsoft. And so now you can take a snapshot and you could say, oh, we should start taxing all this wealth. But the problem is, is this a good idea? What you should what you should look at to figure out whether or not this is a good idea is start doing it way in the past. Start doing this in like uh, when they started the taxation in the first place. Start doing it in the 19-teens. Just start it right there. What would all these companies look like then? We've already discussed Elon Musk. Now, obviously, he had a bit of a parabolic move out of what his wealth number was over, over 2020 because of what happened with Tesla. But we had we had a fairly popular meme going around talking about the fact that Elon Musk had a net wealth of $26 billion and he only had like $300 million in cash. The rest of it was all in Tesla and SpaceX. Mm-hmm. And if they started the wealth tax then at that time, he would have had to start selling parts of Tesla and SpaceX to just pay the wealth tax. And then what happens after that? Okay, so now we're just talking about 2019, 2020. What happens if you start this back in 2000? What happens if you're consistently taking 3% of the wealth of Microsoft and of, of Jeff Bezos and of Musk after he gets PayPal and sells PayPal? Do you end up still having SpaceX right now? Do you still end up having Tesla? No, but that's the hard. See, that's the hardest problem to solve are the unseen. Mm-hmm. This is why this is what makes our messaging hard to see. But if you can kind of forecast I mean, God only knows what we could have right now had we not taken all this productive money. I keep talking about. I mean, have you ever seen the? Did you ever watch the Jetsons when you were of, growing up? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think that's what we'd look like right now if it weren't for taxation. But tell better. the truth, yeah, but probably better. better than that. But honestly, yeah. too, you guys, we just went through a cold storm, right? Lots of ice and snow or whatever. I guarantee you, by this time, by twenty twenty, we are twenty twenty one. We would have already had roads that would just automatically melt the ice when it touched it. So that, or whatever we would have, we would be flying around, whatever it would, who knows what we could have come up with. Had we not sucked out $50 trillion or however much it is. I don't can't remember how much they've sucked out of the economy, but just imagine the wealth that this, the, 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 the standard of living that we could have had we had not taken all this productive money out. And for what? To give it to the government? You so think they Facebook could do, would exist? So they can, uh, well, damn, now you're making the argument in the other direction. <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe we should have it. Well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And then those of you that are in the stock market with us, you understand this. When an owner of a company starts selling shares, it's not good. what does everybody else do? They sell their they shares. They sell their shares. <laughs> yeah. So now, you know, instead of having a, a you know, 10% drop in the price, you're going to have a 30% drop in the price because everybody's going to jump ship with the owner. And what happens is the owner is still okay, but all the people who have their retirement accounts and that, that are making a living trying to trade or maybe they just have their retirements invested, well, they end up getting hurt really bad from that because mm-hmm. that drop is really bad for them. This, this 3% taken into account when people start selling their shares to pay the government the money because they don't have the money in cash, when they start selling their shares to pay off the government... That is going to send triggers throughout the market that is going to have astronomical effects on the actual stock prices and is going to affect a lot of people. And what really bothers me from this is we don't know what the market would come up with. But what we do know is that the government wastes a lot of money. The government's really bad at spending money on things that have a return on them, that actually produce value in the long run. The, the government's really bad at that. The government, What the government does with money is they, they take it, and then they mold it into the form of a bomb, and then they drop it somewhere and it explodes. Yeah. And that's what the government does with all money, essentially, is, is they set it on fire. And so we were taking the money out of the productive side of the economy, and then we're putting it into the government, and then we're saying that somehow they're going to achieve the same GDP growth with them spending money on $90,000 toilet seats 
instead of people in the productive side of the economy actually using that to grow the economy. It's a racket. It's it is. It is. It, it is we've a seen racket. This play out through history so mm. many times, and yet this is like so hard. I think for people to wrap their brains around, but uh, not for people that listen to this show. You guys get it. Mm. You guys understand. Mm -hmm. I'm just you know, mm. I'm just sick of it, man. 